Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Destiny video. The first Age of Triumph livestream just finished. We got a ton of new information and it's safe to say Age of Triumph is going to be a pretty exciting event. Whether you've been with Destiny since day one or you are relatively new to the series, there is going to be a lot of stuff to do earn and collect. In the event you've missed the live stream or you just want a concise recap, then let's talk about everything you need to know based on the information we have so far. If you do enjoy this video, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions and of course, let me know what you think about all of this too. There is some stuff in here that I am definitely personally pretty excited about. Now, first up, let's talk dates. We have two more live streams that will take place over the next two weeks, both of which will be on Wednesday at the same time. But once that is done, Age of Triumph will go live at the end of the month, Tuesday, March 28th. So not too long to wait now. And given the amount of stuff that we're going to have to do, it's safe to say this will keep us busy for a good month or two. By which time they will hopefully be talking about Destiny 2. It's also worth reiterating that this is going to be the final live event for Destiny 1. While the game will continue to exist when Destiny 2 drops, there will be no more content for this iteration of the game after this event. Age of Triumph is the final send-off before we move on to the next generation, so to speak. So after this, that's it. That is Destiny 1, as you know it. But anyway, onto the information at hand. What do they actually talk about during today's stream? Well, the simplest way to look at it is in three different categories. Activities, rewards, and record book. Let's start with activities. This is the director, a place we're all no doubt very familiar with, but down here where they have the featured activities, there have been some additions. Most of these they'll be showing next week, but the one on the far right is the one we really care about. This is a weekly featured raid. All of the old raids are coming up to the current light level of 390 to match Wrath of the Machine. To be clear, you'll be able to get 400 through them, but hard mode difficulty is 390, again, just like Wrath. So 390 Vault of Glass, Crotosome Raid, and King's Fall. And what's more, there are going to be four new challenge modes added as well. The raids that already have challenge modes will still keep them, so Wrath of the Machine and King's Fall, but there will be new challenges added to Vault of Gloss for Templar and Atheon, as well as Crota's End, and while they didn't list those ones, I'm going to assume that's going to be Eyut and Crota. Of course, with up-to-date light level raids means up-to-date light level gear, so you'll be able to get 400 light Vault of Glass gear, Crota's End gear, King's Fall, and, well, you've already got Wrath of the Machine. With regards to weapons, they haven't said too much just yet. It's probably safe to assume they will be back too, but one thing they did call out, yes, there will be a 400 light Vex Mythoclast. I wonder if that also means there'll be a 400 light Necrochasm and Touch of Malice too. They didn't confirm that, but given their kind of links to the other raids, I think it might well happen. I mean, it's probably going to be one of those things where to round out the year, they effectively push everything up to 400, so you can effectively have whatever you want to round out Destiny 1. Now, returning for a second to the activity. As mentioned, there will be a featured weekly raid event. When a raid shows up here, all the challenge modes are active at the same time. These will rotate weekly, and upon completing the raid, you will get some raid gear, obviously, but also an Age of Triumph ornament. Now, I'll speak a little bit more about these when we speak about rewards, but the long story short is, all raid gear will now have ornaments. That's Vault, Crota, King's Fall, and Wrath of the Machine. Wrath of the Machine has them already, however, that gear will be getting a second ornament slot to give you more options, plus all the other gear will be getting two slots. So all raid gear will have its base version, plus two ornament options. And speaking of feature raids, for the first four weeks, the schedule is as follows. Crota is actually going to be the first one on March 28th. Then the week after that will be Vault of Glass, then King's Fall, and then Wrath of the Machine. Of course, these raids can be done at 390 outside of this. You can simply select them from the director, but you just won't get the ornament unless it's a featured raid. Additionally, old raids are also going to be getting new rewards. So for those of you that are not particularly excited about, say, Wrath of the Machine showing up as a featured, they said that raids that previously didn't have, say, a sparrow may get that as a reward, or a ghost, etc. So I'd expect that then means things like Vault of Glass Ghosts, Wrath of the Machine Sparrows, etc. So basically, if you're going to be redoing a raid that you've done time and time again, there should still be something new for you to get. Also, on the raid front, they said they have tweaked some of the experiences as well. The core experience will remain intact, so you won't go and find things like Taken or Seaver in the Vault. But what they have done is they've gone through and just updated things a bit. For example, Vault of Glass, the Oracle phase on the Templar was always a little bit too long, and people tended to sort of die near the very end and they had to do the whole thing again, so they've cut that down a little bit, so it'll be much shorter. Crota, they've made some changes they didn't specifically speak about, but I'd imagine that ties into the way that the content used to be cheesed, so they're probably going to make it so you actually have to do it legitimately. Basically, the raid you knew will still be the same, but it will have a few tweaks here and there. So the core experience will still be ever-present, but 
there may be a few things kind of behind the scenes. Also, when they do drop the patch notes, the raid section will be particularly vague. So if you do look through the patch notes, say on March 28th, and see, you know, the raid changes looking very minimal. That is because they are trying to keep stuff hidden because they don't want the patch notes to effectively reveal the new mechanics. Apparently, with regards to Vital Gloss, that is the hardest challenge mode they have made to date. And they said you're going to need to be very, very careful with that one. So expect that to be harder than anything we have done so far. Now, moving on from there to speak about rewards. Now, this ties into the stuff I just spoke about. But as mentioned, there will be ornaments for all raid gear. There will also be new gear to earn. In fact, they said there is a new Vault of Glass helmet. I assume that means there's also going to be a matching set to go with that too. There is, in fact, this image that went out on Twitter. That, for sure, is a new Hunter Cloak. The arms look interesting too, and that metal leg. So it goes without saying, there is going to be some stuff to go after. And they also said that rewards are, quote-unquote, generous as heck. So they don't want it to feel like a chore, where you basically have to go back into these raids and grind time and time again to try and get those rewards you already have or you have before. They want it to basically be a much more enjoyable experience where you jump back in, you basically relive these moments, and of course you're getting rewards in the process. So hopefully loot drops should be plentiful. And then after that, the final thing you'll be earning, at least from the information we have right now, there may well be more. But for now, there is stuff that is tied to the record book, so let's talk about that. The Age of Triumph record book is the biggest one to date. It has 13 pages in total, and rather interestingly, most of the rewards are emblems. Now, quick bit of speculation for me, this is not confirmed, but if they're rewarding Guardians with emblems based on their final Destiny achievements, knowing full well that gear and cosmetics do not carry over to Destiny 2, I wonder if that actually means that emblems might. They seem like a pretty low impact object, something you could send over, something that would then allow people in Destiny 2 to say, hey, I played Destiny 1, this is what I did without actually impacting the player experience. The counterpoint to this was that Deej, when speaking about a Trials of Osiris emblem in the live stream, said something along the lines of Guardians will be able to use this in Destiny 1. So the fact that he especially called that out makes me think that maybe you can't bring them over to Destiny 2. But again, that's just food for thought. Either way, back to the facts. First up, you do not have to complete the whole book to get the rewards. They designed it so that it caters to all sorts of different Destiny players. There's a page at the start that acknowledges day one players. There are nodes for people that have been playing since the start, say the first few months, during the dark below, House of Wolves, etc. There are pages for Titans, Hunters and Warlocks, pages for Strikes, Raids, Crucible, Trials of Osiris, Reputation, etc. I'm not going to scroll through all the pages here because that's stuff we can look at in more detail later. But in order to get all the rewards on the front page, you just need to hit rank 7. You can do that with roughly half the book, so everyone should be able to do that. As mentioned, the rewards are largely emblems, so it is basically just a means for you to show what kind of player you are. If you want to have the raid emblem and say, I'm a raider, this is my page complete, or I'm a crucible guy, I'm a Trials of Osiris guy, etc., then those are the options. The rank 7 reward is much like they did with Moments of Triumph. It is basically a link to the Bungie store, so it allows you to buy a... Age of Triumph t-shirt, and of course you can only do that once you've hit rank 7. Some of the pages are going to be retroactive, so things to do with when you played the game, legacy stuff, and also faction reputations, but stuff that surrounds, say, the Crucible and Strikes, like kills, assists, revives, etc., that stuff will not be, so you'll have to do that starting on March 28th. Trials of Osiris, in light of sort of, you know, the difficulty associated with it, will be retroactive, so there are some discrepancies there. But generally speaking, the way you can look at it is anything that is timely is typically going to be retroactive, whereas anything grindy will be done post March 28th. Some pages also have a bonus where when you complete that page, you get something else. But again, you don't need this to complete the rewards. As a final passing note, this is pretty obvious, but again, Age of Triumph will not be raising the light level. So 400 is where we're going to stay until Destiny 2. So for the time being, that is pretty much it. From today's stream, that is the most important information. For me personally, I am super excited to return to Vault of Glass. That is still, to this day, my favourite raid and my favourite raid gear. And as someone that loves customization, being able to get ornaments for that gear and all the other raid gear, that is going to be fun. Sure, that gear won't be going into Destiny 2, so some of you might be asking what the point is, but the answer is to bring closure to Destiny 1. Give us something to do for the next few months and ensure that when we do move on, our legacy is complete. So for the time being, that is it. Keep it locked because I've got more Destiny stuff coming your way this week. But for the time being, thank you for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out. From the day your ghost woke you, your light has been our beacon. You defended this city from the worst the darkness sent against us. Atheon, Crota, Oryx, Axis. When you are called on, you will do it again. The city's children tell your story to each other. Pretending to be guardians, they grow braver 
and more powerful with each retelling. They are no longer afraid. You have shown them and you have shown me what it is to hope. You have led us to a new age, Guardian. An age of triumph and remembrance. Today and tomorrow and every day, you fight for us. You fight for the traveler. You fight for those who fled here from a thousand nations looking for refuge. We thank you, Guardian, and we will never forget.